All right, hey, y'all. Um, I'm Brent Amara. I'm a faculty member here. Some of you know me. Those of you who don't will have me in the core. So bring lots of coffee these days. <laughs> um, so at, one, one nice thing about EB is that the grief organization really helps you know, promote grad student cohesiveness and does things to help you know, improve your lives, which is really nice. Um, gives you a voice on the faculty vision, things like that. Um, <coughs> One thing I had me do last year was talk about building a website at UTK. Okay, so well, why does this matter? And interrupt me at any point with any questions or whatever, of course. So, so why does building a website matter? Well, here is a record of my web hits from Tennessee. Okay, uh, over this time interval, you can see where they're located. And at this point, what's going on? I was giving a job talk. So my web traffic increased over 500% over the previous month. And I think here is when they were deciding who's going to come do job talks. So and people definitely do look at your website and they're deciding who to hire, um, looking at postdocs to check it out. And so you want to make sure that they find you. Right? And if it weren't for this, they would find this, that I'm a rugby player or a hurler, which is some sort of <laughs> 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 thing. Right? So, it's nice to have, you know, take control of what people see you as, right? Um, I have no sports skills at all, for example. <laughs> um, one thing also to think about is your social profile, right? So you might have a formal website, but you might have Facebook, you might have Google+, you might have Twitter, you might have a YouTube channel, right? All that stuff, think about, you know, who's going to be hiring you in five years, right? Because this stuff will never disappear. So if you're you know, complaining about something or are drunk in a photo or something, you know, someone's going to be hiring you five years like, oh, well, I'm not sure about that person. Right? Science is a very, very competitive field, right? and it's based on both merit and a lot of luck. Right? So make sure you sort of bias it in your favor as much as possible. So I'm just going to be touching on building a website, stuff like that. Um, OIT here offers some training and help. Okay. Um, so here's training. Oh, these slides are up online. Too. Um, workshops. There's some good tutorials here. The thing about these tutorials is allows you to test things in real time. You want to say, okay, how do I make a pull-down menu? So here's how you make a pull-down menu. Here, try it out here. You can type in code and say, ah, no, horrible error. Okay, change the code. So that's helpful too. Okay. Um, Things you be thinking about when you're developing a website are, first of all, cost. One cost is money, and I know money seems tight, um, and it gets you know it gets better. But even more cost is time, right? Um, making a website takes time, and maintaining it takes time. Making a website it's awesome, it's fun. You know, like you think, oh, let me add a little button here, let me add a picture here, it's really cool. But then coming back in a year and saying, okay, let me update my list of publications. Okay, let me update my phone number. That's boring. So you make sure it's you know maintainable, and easy to do that. So maybe have somebody automatically updating. Right, it's so like my my website now has a front page something about like recent um, high performance computing jobs in our lab, and also a photo of the Smokies, and it's scraped from the National Park Service webcam. It's always like updated. You say, oh, how beautiful Tennessee is! I want to go go to grad school there because look, they have new trees, um, and it also keeps the website looking fresher. Okay, um, avoid blundering into trouble. Right. So it's very easy to you know, have, have Twitter or have a blog and say something about someone like, look at this bad paper that just came out in PNAS. How did this stuff get in there ever? Right? Um, if you want to say that, that, that's fine. But just think about someone's going to be able to see that in two years or five years. Okay? So be careful about that. And so with the website, you have a bigger platform to say things. Make sure you're saying what you want people to see. Um, <coughs> sort of choose the persona you want to have. Right? So you have various interests. Maybe you don't want to tell them about your STEM poison hobby, which are in taxonomy. Right? Maybe it won't help you. Um, sorry, I like taxonomy. Um, so sort of think about what, what you're presenting to people. Okay. No, it doesn't have to be fancy to be useful. So, for example, here's one by Premal Shah, who's a grad student here, who's recently finished. And you see, I mean, he hits a few major things, right? Something about him: research interests, publications, and contact. All right. So someone looking for you, looking you up in science. It's going to care about what you do, you know. Does it actually result in product? Yeah, that's what they care about. Um, and then 
they have to be able to offer you a job. Um, Mackenzie Taylor, another recent graduate who did really well here, um, has things about you know, research publications, some more of her background, so sort of about means education, and also teaching and service. Right? So if you're thinking of going into a, I mean, everywhere cares about do you teach well, especially if you're going to a school where they emphasize teaching, you know, being able to show that you teach well, you have your slides up, something like that could be really helpful too. All right, how do you build a website? Well, the trade-off of complexity and power, right? So here's an easy big oven, you know, not very powerful. Here's a commercial kitchen, very powerful. You know, complexity, you know, have all your raw ingredients. Here, open the package. You can see the main axes, okay? Um, you can use vol space, okay? It's not super powerful, right? You can't have MySQL database. You can't have a lot of scripts running, as far as I know. But it's also, you have to do it all yourself. If you want it to have, you know, a big bold like your name, you have to go in and say, you know, make my name bold, you know, HTML speak. Okay. If you want to have the same, you know, header on each page, you have to either use some bring in a template thing or hand code it. And actually right now the EB website is done with all hand coding. So if they want to add like a link to newsletters on the EB website, I have to go into every single page on the website and say, add the newsletters link. Okay. A lot of sort of hand coding. It doesn't actually give you any power, it just gives you a lot of annoyance. It makes it harder to maintain. Right? So I say, let me just add a new feed, new you know, element on the side about like news about me. Right? And it makes you more reluctant to do that because you have to do it on every single page. Google Sites is another one. So it's free. You can redirect domain names. So you can have, like, for me, I'm brownamerica.info. So no matter where I go. And I, I said this one was an undergrad. So you know, I was at Harvard, I was at Davis, then I was at Nesson, then I was here. And they still can track and do the same address no matter where I go. Okay. Um, <coughs> and so, whereas your UTK one will change when you graduate, um, eight years eight years from now, it will end still. Um, so Google Sites can track you uh, with your domain name. 100 megabytes, it's free. Um, has some power and moderate complexity, right? So you can do some things, but at some point you start running up against what you can't do. Right? So you can't if you want to go and hand edit certain things, it can be harder. There's things like Blogger or WordPress. Okay. Um, those can get pretty powerful, and it can be pretty easy to set up. WordPress takes like five minutes to set up, and it's very nice because you have templates. If you want to completely change how your website looks, go to a different template, and then you have a different background, different pictures, that sort of thing. Okay. And finally, um, well, not almost finally, things like Drupal or Joomla, okay, which are content management systems, CMS. Which is like WordPress. You set up templates and you say, okay, make me a new page, you know, make a new page, um, and you just add the text you want in the page, and everything's taken care of. All right, so, yeah. Is Blogger and WordPress free? Yep. Yeah. That, those are free. Drupal Joomla is free. Google Sites is free. Um, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of free things here. And this stuff, I mean, this stuff isn't hard to set up really, but it's used by like, like the White House uses Drupal for its website. Okay, so, you know, larger ways you can do it. And you can, and you, a lot of these have, like both these and WordPress and Blogger, you can, if you want to start selling things, you can have a shopping cart module. If you want to have a map, you can have a mapping module. So all these things are available and free. You can just stick them to the website by writing your own mapping module. So. And there's also commercial hosting, right, which can be pretty powerful. And it can range from very simple sort of turnkey, you know, here's your website, and then you can just modify the templates, to, you know, here's just an empty web space folder. Add, add stuff to the folder. Okay. And commercial hosting can be pretty cheap, so I pay like five bucks a month for my hosting, for my like website. Okay, so not bad. Okay, how does this work? So you can buy your domain name, and buying it costs like ten or fifteen dollars a year. Okay, so it's not bad. You can pay for more years if it's worth it. And one thing is if you don't pay one year, then someone else will come in and buy it. And then try to sell it back to you for thousands of dollars. So keep keep up to date with your bills. Um, yeah, I lost a website that way. Uh, yeah. um, so it goes so when someone types in, you know, www your address, it goes to a name server that says, okay, that actual address is right here, which is hosted by them, and there is a whole set of folders, and in this folder is that website. Okay, and. 
you know, this can change. That number can change to this, but the name server still learns, okay, Brian and Mary goes to here, it's a different website. And so if you have a computer at home, periodically your IP address, this is IP address, will change. Okay. And if you have something like this, domain name, it'll keep pointing at what your, your domain name is, your address is. So it's really handy. Okay. And so that's basically, so that's basically the domain names, what they mean. So you just have to point to an address. In something like Google Sites, you can just buy one and from somewhere else, and then they have tutorials on how to add and make a point at them. On the host private like this, they do it for you. Um, if you have a Mac server or a Windows server, you can have you can buy a domain name and point it to that. Okay. If it is something like this, is presumably they have things to make sure their their website stays up. You know, if power goes out in one area, it goes to a different area. Whereas the laptop under the server under your desk might not have that feature. The holding cousin you only have more power to. Any questions? Anyone else? Okay. So what is it like to write for the web? So basic stuff is HTML still. Okay. Um, and so you get basic HTML structure. You have a tag. You have the content you want to decorate with the tag, and then you close the tag. Open tag. So, for example, if you want to have my content bold, I would say, you know, carrot b slash b. So, okay, it becomes bold. Right. If you want it to be italicized, i. If you want it to be italicized and bold, both of this. Okay. And a lot of things, like if you're using Google Sites, you don't have to know this. You can just highlight it and say, you know, make bold. If you want to go in low level, you can do this too. You can add header information. I right, so say what size do you want it to be? You want it to be big. And then you can add a link. Okay. So a uh, hypertext reference that content that. Okay. And that just gives you a link if someone clicks on it, they go to the resource. So I have a sample set up you can look at. So here's the raw code. Okay. So we say we have an HTML document. Right? We have my header information here, which is just like the name of the website. You can see at the top of the browser. And then stuff to help search engines, which they might use. So you see like in, if you see in Google, I see like you know, a description of like the website and then like a little blurb about it. That's probably this. Um, and it helps search and find you. So you say, like, person to hire is a keyword. Like, oh, person to hire. Ah. Yeah. Uh, love it. And then you have a body that has just the main text. So, like, here's the beginning, here's some content and paragraphs, here's a link. Okay. So, you can go here later if you want and look at what the website looks like on the web. It's very basic and ugly. And then you can look at view source. All your web, all web, web browsers have some sort of link to view source, which you can look underneath and see the actual content. Okay. Um, here's another way. So Google Sites is free, but that's not necessarily the best thing. I'm just showing you how you can use Google Sites, for example. Um, you can log in, and then you can say create new site. And it has tons of templates. Okay. And all a template is is pages pre-filled with certain formatting. You know, we have like, you know, a pretty background and some links. Um, you know, a calendar might be embedded in there, that sort of thing. You can modify it. And so last year I made an EB template. So if you go and search for EB, you can get the EB template, right? Which has basic information about like publications, research, teaching. Not so like beautiful, but it's sort of greenish ecology green. And it has Darwin on it. You can't go wrong with Darwin. Um, it basically tells you a little bit of you know, information. You can, you can look at the source and see uh, how, do, how do we have a picture on here? Maybe, okay, how do we have a picture? Okay, you know, upload a new picture of me, say. You duck and freak yourself away. Um, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, and so it's easy to modify. Okay? Um, so those are the basics of making a website. I don't know if people want to take some time now and start making them. You can start making them. Uh, go to Google Sites and make one, or go log into Ballspace and make one. You can start we can start working on that. We can walk around here and help people. Yeah? Can you go back one slide that shows the link and how to upload to the wall? Yep. 
Uh, actually, let me just go to, oh, yeah, click back. So this link, yep. Yes, you can go to ball space and log in. And then that ball space can post, we have HTML. I'm not sure if they can do PHP. So the so regular way of making websites is HTML. So basically a budget, a text document that has those tags about decorations. Make this little, make this big. Um, you can also use programming languages to make it too. So you can have a PHP script that will generate a website. You can have um, JavaScript that will make modify elements of a website. You can use Perl to make modify websites. Actually use R too um, <laughs> to modify a website. Um, so if you have, have a, and the nice thing about a programming language is you can have it do things. You can have it like display like the current date is this. So you look, oh look, I know the current date now. Um, <laughs> you can have it linked. To, you can have it linked to other information. Um, one thing you start thinking about is using external sources. So for example, I made a website for Gregory writing about cichlids, and it displays a page of videos about cichlids from YouTube that it just takes from a certain feed from YouTube, just embed them into the website. Um, and embeds a list of publications about cichlids from a Mendeley group. So actually, let me show you this now. 